And now it's time for a Q&A from you, the viewers. And I got this question in from Mickey Conway in regards to Blizzard and Hearthstone. Uh, this, of course, is an issue related to a player at a recent Hearthstone tournament named Blitzchung, who's from Hong Kong. Uh, he expressed his support for protests going on in Hong Kong. And as a result of that, uh, due to pressure from the Chinese government, that player was stripped of a title and banned from future tournaments for at least a year. And this, of course, had a significant monetary penalty for this guy, and it was unfortunate that it occurred. And then, of course, over the last two weeks, we've had similar issues related to pressure being placed on Apple uh, with an app that Apple pulled down not only from the China App Store that the Chinese government didn't like, but also worldwide. And, of course, the big controversy related to the NBA, uh, where a manager of a team expressed support for Hong Kong protesters, and the Chinese government reacted very strongly there and canceled games, took games off the air, uh, and really let, made clear to the NBA that they're not going to support uh, future incidents of players expressing themselves. And, of course, LeBron James came out and endorsed the Chinese government's position on this related to NBA players. And I think all of this is bad, and I think no one who's... Uh, in a Western country where free speech is allowed, would disagree with that. And it really is unfortunate that uh, market forces here are allowing the export of censorship, which I think is not a good precedent here. And it's going to be a very complex decade trying to figure out how to make all this stuff work because we have very intertwined economies despite the fact that our political systems are very different. During the Cold War, there was a separation politically and economically, but not anymore. And it's certainly going to be a challenge for policymakers rolling forward. And I think it's unfortunate what all of these companies have done uh, because they really are allowing this, this censorship to go overseas and impact uh, people who have the right to express themselves. And I'm very disappointed with all of them. And I really think it's time for all of us to start thinking about how we express ourselves when we are upset over a company not aligning with our own values. And in this instance, a lot of people took to Twitter and Facebook and maybe direct emails to the company and expressed their displeasure with what those companies are doing. But how many of us have actually voted with our wallets? And that's something that I think we all need to start doing more of. And I think when we see people who are very passionately angry about what a company is doing when there is a value misalignment, uh, we need to encourage those folks to pull their money out as well, because ultimately this is all about money. China, as a government, can single-handedly uh, stop the flow of money to one of these American companies. We collectively have to work together and do the same thing. And I'm as guilty of this as anyone because it is an inconvenience for me, especially, to stop doing business with Apple. Am I prepared to say that I'm done with Apple today? Not yet. Um, but I am going to be keeping a closer eye on how they are uh, going to deal with future issues because this app that they pulled down uh, was, is not going to be the only thing that they're going to face pressure from China about. Apple's got over a million employees of their own in the country on top of everyone they employ to make their phones. They are deeply intertwined with, with China. Uh, what's interesting is that Google, who is not allowed in China at all, did not pull down the app when the Chinese government wanted them to pull it down. So you can see what's happening here. There is an economic pressure on Apple to behave a certain way. And it comes down to just about every relationship that we have. Uh, and I wanted to show you a few things where I did finally exercise my uh, wallet because I felt I needed to. And I think I'm going to probably have to do it with Apple at some point. Uh, Newegg, of course, we had the issue with them a few uh, years ago, or maybe a year or two ago, uh, when they took my personal data and that of many other Newegg customers and just turned it over to the state of Connecticut's Department of Revenue Services for a tax thing. And all of us got bills from the uh, Connecticut state uh, tax man about purchases that we made that we did not pay sales tax on. Yes, we should have paid use tax on those things. We did not. However, the company just turned it over without even a warrant or a subpoena or even a court challenge. They didn't stand up for their customers. I thought that value was wrong, and therefore I stopped doing business with them and stopped talking about them on the channel. The Verge is another example uh, where The Verge uh, went after independent creators who were critical of that infamous PC build that uh, was on The Verge YouTube channel. The Verge took the video down because it just wasn't editorially up to their standard, they said. But then they went after YouTube creators who did not take their videos down of the thing that they were critical of. I think it's a total fair use, irrespective of how long those videos were. And we had a corporate media company here essentially bullying independent media over something that 
criticize that larger corporate entity. I thought that value was wrong and, and completely misaligned with my own. I don't link to The Verge anymore as a result. Tiffany and Company, <laughs> off the tech thing here for a second. I used to buy, you know, not expensive Tiffany things, but nice Tiffany things for my wife every year around the holiday season. I stopped doing so when Tiffany supported the SOPA and PIPA legislation. If you don't remember that, that was an effort by a number of U.S. corporations, including Tiffany and uh, the movie industry, to essentially collude with the U.S. government to take over the domain name system. And if they found, you know, some company or some website was doing something they didn't like, uh, they could have that DNS record pulled so nobody could get to the website. It was total censorship, censorship across the board, not only of American citizens, but also people abroad, uh, because it would essentially take down the website uh, when a company wasn't happy with what was being expressed on that site. Uh, they offered all sorts of assurances that this wouldn't be an issue, but it really was a huge problem. And if you go back and look at it, uh, the internet reacted very strongly because we were very close to this happening and it was something that Tiffany was very much supportive of and never apologized or backed away from. And as a result of that, I decided that I would no longer do business with them either. And this is something I think we all need to start thinking about more because I can guarantee you that Blizzard, the NBA, and Apple have probably not seen even a blip on their revenue from those of us in the West who are upset about these behaviors. I can tell you people are still going to NBA games. You can see them on TV every night. They're still buying hats and jerseys and everything else related to their favorite teams. Uh, I am still buying Apple products. Uh, people are still out there with their Blizzard subscriptions and buying Hearthstone and going to their events and paying that company money. And if there's no penalty for them violating the values that we hold, then they're going to continue to operate this way. And I think it's something that we all need to think about rolling forward because the only way they're going to listen to us is through money. And we have to decide where we want to send our money to. Uh, I had an incident with a bank here locally that started really going after people who were falling on hard times in the middle of a very deep recession here in the United States. They jacked up their overdraft fees, even for people that had overdraft protection and were paying for it. So they were essentially profiting off of people's misfortune. And I thought that was wrong. So I went through the process of pulling my money out. It took a whole day and a half because I had to set up everything with my wife and go to the bank and do all this stuff. But in the end, it was worth it because I went to a bank that didn't do that. And I think it's important for those of us who feel strongly about something to not stop with the tweet and continue onward, even if it means giving up something you really love, even if it means giving up something that's going to cause you to have a great inconvenience. I still think it's important for us to express ourselves that way because clearly these companies aren't listening to us when we just talk. Now my pick of the week this week is the Exponent Podcast. We've talked about this podcast before, uh, but episode 175 this week was on this topic and it kind of inspired this discussion today. Uh, so check it out. It's definitely a, a very opinionated piece, but I think it's a good analysis of some of the complexities that we are dealing with here in the 21st century. So if you want more on this, definitely check out this discussion. It was a very good listen. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.